Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by today for one of our weekly webinars. Uh, most of you, or a lot of you, uh, attend quite a few of these, so if, if that's you today, thanks for showing up again and, and uh, taking part in today's webinar. Uh, if you're brand new, awesome, we're glad to have you. Uh, we, have done, we do about a webinar every week. Some of that is dependent on our uh, travel schedule, but um, for example, next week we won't have a webinar. The following week we'll get back uh, we'll get back at it, but, um, but yeah, thanks to, if it's your first time, fifth time, a hundredth time, thanks for stopping by today. Uh, my name is Stephen Wright. Typically, if you, if you tune in here, you're probably more used to hearing Matt Baer uh, speak on these uh, recently since we've gone to, we've up to the frequency of these webinars because people tend to like them. We get asked about them all the time. Uh, as a result, you know, we've complied and, and we're doing them about weekly now. Um, and so now, yeah, just to, to give Matt a little bit time uh, not having to do webinars all the time, he's allowed me to step in and, and do some of these as well. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today. All right, today's topic, we are going to talk about uh, what Google did recently with removing the, the ads the, the, through Google AdWords that used to be on the right side. What do they do? Why do they do it? And most importantly, what are the implications for you and how should you respond? Um, so we're going to take a, a quick look at a few different things, but before we start answering or talking about any specific questions, um, just wanted to go over a few housekeeping things. Uh, as usual, um, we will we will send out uh, the recording. Um, we'll send out a recording of the webinar after we are finished. Uh, typically, it takes us a, a couple days to get that up on our website, and then uh, for us to send that out. So uh, expect that in the next probably two to four business days. Um, if you want a copy of the slides, I can send that to you as well, but that'll be part of the webinar. Uh, and we are going to have a, a Q&A session here uh, at the end. Uh, we do this every time. Same thing with, with sending out the, the recording of the webinar, it's something that we do all the time. So uh, as you see invitations for future webinars, register, you'll get a copy of it even if you can't attend live. Um, yeah, and we'll have a Q&A session. If you do have questions throughout, you should see the, the question panel that you can submit a question. Uh, I will probably answer most of those at the end. Uh, we'll take some time specifically for that. Uh, however, if you, ha if you have a question, and, and you know, feel free to ask it at any time. Um, if it makes sense to answer kind of in the context of what I'm, I'm speaking about at a current time, I'll, I'll try to do that to the best of my ability as well. Um, I think that's it. If you if you have a question afterwards um, and you don't uh, have a chance to ask it, and I don't get a chance or I don't get a chance to answer it, you can see my email there on the screen. It's Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N at Q4Launch.com, and uh, you can email me directly, and I'll get back to you uh, with an answer as quickly as I can there as well. So, without further ado, uh, we're just going to look at today's agenda real quick. Um, we're going to answer these four basic questions. Um, we, yeah, we're going to answer these four basic questions right here. We're going to dive a little bit deeper on all of them. Um, yeah, and we will see what comes of it. But the first question, and I guess it's two questions, what did Google do and why did they do it? So we're going to look at some of uh, what they specifically have said about it. Um, what does this mean for your pay-per-click, that would be the PPC, and search engine optimization results? So we're going to find out what they did, why they did it, and then what does it mean for you. Um, from there, we're going to look at, okay, well, we know what this could, could mean, what, could, what this could mean for my website, for my business. Now, what's my response, or what should it be? And then we're going to have a little fun at the end. Uh, if you have any ideas on this, please send them. I'd love to share them with the group. Um, but we have a few ideas that, you know, hey, what might Google do with this now empty real estate on their search engine results pages? Um, it used to be the ads, uh, and what might it be next? So we're just, we have no idea on that. It's simply uh, just speculation, um, but we're going to you know, take, take a stab at it, and, and we'll see if we're, if we're right here in the next few months if, if Google makes any further changes. So, um, yeah, we can move on here. So what's the first question here? What did Google do? Um, if you've noticed it, if you haven't noticed it, we're here to tell you. Uh, they've removed the right side ads. We've already talked about that. Um, and the other thing as part of that is they have added 
one of their ads um, from the right side to the top. So you can see this is just a, a simple search that I did for Panama City Vacation Rentals. Ads are no longer on the right side as you can see, but now there's four ads up at the top. So most simple question I'll probably answer all day, what did Google do? They removed the right side ads, they added an ad to the top, and which has increased that from three ads to now four ads. Uh, and you can see there for this one, the, the four ads that are showing up uh, are VRBO, uh, beachrentals.com, homeaway.com, vacationrentals.com. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this down the road, but you're going to see, in our opinion, it's going to be harder to compete for that real estate, uh, especially when you're going up against uh, folks who have uh, un not unlimited budgets, but certainly higher budgets to allocate towards pay-per-click and, and search engine optimization than what most of you who are on, on this webinar today probably have. Um, so we're going to look a little bit closer at that as well. Um, this kind of helps answer why, why they did it. Uh, this is Google's official statement. I'll read it for you all. Uh, we've been testing this layout for a long time, so some people might see it on a very small number of commercial queries. We'll continue to make tweaks, but this is designed for highly commercial queries where the layout is able to provide more relevant results for people searching and better performance for the advertisers. Um, so that's Google's answer. That's kind of why they did it. That's, that's a little bit of the insight as to what they were thinking as they were doing this. I think some of the things that we can pick out is, one, it's designed for highly commercial queries, right? So they are trying to um, take what they consider to be the commercial queries, and, and we'll see in just a second that all of your businesses really fit right into this, this example of a highly commercial query. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, they are trying to provide better results, more relevant results for the people searching, um, so they are users. So yes, we are, we are in one way the pe people that, that use Google on a consistent basis because we are building our websites and our brands so that we show up highly in the results. However, Google cares more about the people who are doing the searches. Um, far more than they care about, you know, where our website ranks. They, they care most about giving their users, their searchers, the best, most relevant results they can, and this is a step in that direction uh, in their opinion, which is why, one of the reasons, again, uh, why they did it. What else can we glean uh, from, from this action uh, from Google. We talked about that term, the highly commercial queries. They are trying to make their ads more relevant for these types of queries. The example that Google actually used was as a highly commercial query is hotels in New York City. So I don't know if there's anybody with a hotel in New York City on this on this webinar today, but I know there are people with um, you know vacation rentals in Texas or vacation rentals in Ohio or bed and breakfast in California. All these different things, it, it falls under the same sort of uh, umbrella that is hotels in New York City. Again, it's a highly commercial query. When people are searching for that, there's a high high chance that they will be making a purchase, and, and when they do, um, obviously you, you need to be uh, competing for those spots. Uh, some of the other things we can learn from this is that um, as Google is trying to create more relevant ads and giving a better user experience to the people searching, uh, we, could, we should expect higher conversion rates for the advertisers who, have, who are able to show up in that top four, right? Um, now instead of competing against maybe, uh, maybe six or eight ads that were showing up above the fold, um, now there's just the four. So you, you, you've increased your chances of one getting clicked, and because the competition has gone down, we should see um, higher conversion rates for those people who are deemed to have more relevant ads. Uh, that's a great thing for the advertiser um, if they're able to uh, if they're able to um, rank in, in one of those top four spots. Um, some of the other things that, that we've noticed is that the layout seems a little bit more streamlined with what we see in the mobile search, right? So as we're, as we're swiping on our phones especially and we're just kind of scrolling down the page, there's really not any uh, right side real estate anyways. 
Um, so this is just kind of going in our again in our opinion what we see you know Google continuing to cater towards mobile right and so this single column approach as opposed to having ads off to the right uh, is definitely in line with that and it's more streamlined for what we're seeing in the mobile results um, so that's some that's an observation that we have um, and again the the format is probably a little bit cleaner as well where again we have that single column of search results uh, we don't have anything off to the right side it's just creating a clean um, not getting rid of ads, but uh, uh, get, at least having less ads to siphon through uh, as we are, um, as we're looking to make a decision, you know, as a user who is going to click uh, somewhere on that search page. So what does this mean? Uh, what does this mean for pay-per-click? What does it mean for search engine optimization? Well, some of this is going to be really obvious, right? Uh, for for pay-per-click, Obviously, there is now less real estate above the fold. We just mentioned um, you've, we've gone from six or eight ads that could have been showing above the fold with the three up top and then three or four, three to five on, on the right side. Now there's just the four. So um, there's less real estate. Less real estate means more competitive. And it means that, uh, again, the, the most relevant ads are going to have the advantage. Um, and it's going to be harder for, for you to win those bids for your um, for your ads to be showing up in one of those top four spots, right? Uh, particularly against the larger companies. If, if you were paying attention on that on that image we saw for Pan Panama City vacation rentals, um, again the the top two of the top four were HomeAway and VRBO. A third one was VacationRentals.com, and I think the fourth one was BeachHouseRentals.com. So unless you can see at least three of those have massive SEO pay-per-click budgets uh, that they're going to be able to really uh, put a lot of resources to ranking in one of those top sections. Um, chances are your budgets don't match theirs, and so it's going to be, again, just harder uh, to rank in one of those top four spots. Um, from a search engine optimization standpoint, what, is, what does that mean? What are we going to see there? Well. Again, kind of being obvious, but a fourth ad, um, a, you know, in that in that one column now means that the organic results are getting pushed down a spot. Uh, we all know that a lot of people aren't going to search um, or even look beyond maybe the top three or four spots in a Google search. Um, so that could have some serious implications. Uh, we don't know exactly what that's going to mean, but we know that there is now the opportunity that organic traffic may slip a little bit because that fourth ad has been placed above the organic results. Um, you can see the note there. There are going to be some savvy internet users who understand that uh, people are paying for those top ads and, and um, I would be one of these people. I, I mean, I guess I do work in the industry, but typically I'm not going to click on an ad because I know that somebody's paid for that and they're just, they might not be that great of a result. They just might be the person who paid, you know, the highest bid for that spot. Um, so for me, I'm going to scroll down always to the top organic searches or the organic results uh, before I start clicking anywhere. Um, not everybody's like that. Not everybody works in the industry and understands how ads. People might just be seeing this as um, as just organic ads. I mean, there, there's a good chance that if somebody doesn't notice that little yellow ad uh, button or or yeah, button there below below the headline, chances are they're not going to know that they're going to click there and it could have an impact on um, organic results. And this is as well kind of an implication um, that, that we'll talk about here in a second. But with SEO, what it means now is that map listing um, and those top few orga organic spots have become even more important because they're, they're sliding further down. So, you know, the fourth spot is now the fifth spot, or the sixth spot is now the seventh spot, um, and we know from from the research that that we've seen, just from and just from our own using of Google, uh, that that's going to have some that can have some serious implications because one spot can mean several you know clicks over the course of a month and a year, um, and we know that website traffic then leads to booking. So um, the more that goes down, the fewer bookings potentially uh, that that you might be able to achieve as a result of that. So the next question uh, would be, how should you respond? Um, we're gonna we're gonna tackle three of these things here. Um, 
number one on that list, be active in your search engine optimization. We're going to talk more about that. Uh, two, create great content uh, so that you are continuously showing up in one of those top spots or in the map listing. And then three, just evaluate your AdWords strategy uh, you know, as a whole. So uh, let's look at these three things here in a little more detail. So um, number one, how should you respond? Well, you should be active in your SEO. Um, if, if we were doing this presentation in, per in, in person, I'd ask you all to raise your hand if you've ever noticed that Google makes changes and likes to, uh, to mix things up a bit. Obviously, everybody realizes that or else they, you wouldn't be here um, and, and listening to, to our presentation here today on, on this topic, right? Um, Google changes and evolves all the time. We, we've seen it with all with some of the the penguin and the pigeon updates you know a year or two ago we're seeing it we saw it last year where they made this declaration that every website needs to be mobile friendly um, and we, we're seeing them even kind of double down on that now where they're going to start being even stricter on that um, so so if you don't have a mobile friendly website this is kind of a, a pitch to say hey you need to go get one um, but yeah, we, we see Google change. They change their algorithm. They are continuously trying to better their the experience for their users, um, giving them the most relevant and best search results based on you know what what they are seeing in their data. So they're going to continue to change. This isn't going to be the last time Google rolls out a change. It's going to affect you and your business. Um, it's going to continue to happen. And as a result of that, because Google changes you have to be able to change. You have to be agile in your strategy and shift um, your strategies as Google dictates. It's just kind of the, the way that things are right now and, and you need to be able to do that. So, so with that, with Google removing these right side ads, you need to respond. You need to, to be active in that. You need to, you need to monitor your organic search results in your Google Analytics. You need to see if this change has affected your search traffic. Um, we'll talk a little bit about AdWords here in a second as well, but you need to see, okay, well, am I showing up above the fold anymore for the, for the key terms that I was showing up above the fold for before? Um, how has this impacted me? And especially from a traffic standpoint, um, one of the ways we talked about, I just mentioned that, was, was looking at it and monitoring your organic traffic at least monthly, at least monthly. If not twice a month, honestly, you should probably be in there at least a week and just kind of check the, the heartbeat or the pulse of your, of your traffic. Um, and because of that, and you know, with what we've, everything we've talked about here, one thing I want to mention is, Search engine optimization, SEO, is not a set it once and let it run type of strategy. Um, a lot of times when we, ch when we talk with people, we ask them, hey, how's your organic traffic doing? Hey, are you doing anything um, with SEO right now? Uh, the answer typically is, yeah, when we launched the new website, we set it up back then, but we haven't done anything with it recently. Or yeah, the the marketing partner I'm working with, um, they did something when they when they launched my new site, uh, but I don't know if they've they've done anything with it, you know, of late. If that is the case, that is the wrong strategy. It's flat out just the wrong strategy. You have to be able to change. You have to monitor the results, and you have to know what to do and have the technical expertise to do it. Um, when you see that, that traffic isn't trending in a direction that you, that you like. So again, SEO, not a set it once and let it run type of strategy. It's ongoing. You need to monitor it constantly. Um, and hopefully, you know, right now, some of you are in the background, you know, listening to the webinar and are pulling up your Google Analytics to see how your organic traffic is, is trending over the last several months. Uh, and particularly in the last month or so since this, uh, since this change that Google made has taken place. So. Number two, create great content. If you've listened to us speak, my, Matt or myself ever, uh, you know that we believe strongly in content marketing and we, we know that Google has forever rewarded great content throughout all of its algorithm changes. Um, it's something we've seen consistent. So a lot of the changes that Google makes is trying to, like we mentioned before, create a better user experience for the people searching. Another thing that it that the updates do is that 
the updates are, are put out there to deter people from finding shortcuts in Google's algorithm. Um, you know, a couple years ago, several years ago, it was, hey, we're just going to get all the links that we can to go back to, uh, to our website so that, so that we can be seen more favorably in the eyes of Google. Well, what that, all that did was that, that made people want to just go and, and get any spammy website to link to them and, you know, these link farm sites. And then those link farm sites would link to your website. And, and Google was like, well, this is not what we're after. This is, this is not quality. This is spammy. Uh, this is not providing um, the best results because people are trying to game our algorithm or trying to find a loophole in our system. Um, the thing that we have seen never penalized is great content. Everything else has, has been penalized or hurt in one way or the other. Great content does not get penalized. Uh, as a result of that, what we would recommend is that each of your static pages, so each page on your website needs to be optimized for some keyword that is core to your business. Um, it's, if it's your homepage, uh, it needs to be probably your, the, the most central keywords uh, to your business. So whether it's bed and breakfast in Charleston, hotel in Colorado, um, vacation rentals in San Diego. You obviously have your own set of core keywords that are super important to your business and those keywords are what need to be showing up on the static pages. We take that a step further. Again, if you've heard us speak ever, you know that we believe strongly in blogging and the, and the impact and value that blogging can bring to your website. Um, we feel that way because we know the blog helps us capture long tail keywords that travelers are searching for when they're looking at Google. So while your static pages, uh, we feel like need to be optimized for those keywords that are most core to your business, uh, we feel like the blog allows us to go after a new keyword every single week as we're writing weekly blogs. Um, and what it does is now we can, we can start ranking for things that travelers are searching for, not just lodging related, but anything uh, that people might be searching for uh, when they're looking to take a trip to your area. So instead of vacation rentals in San Diego, it would be restaurants in San Diego, best beaches in San Diego, um, best waterfront dining experience in San Diego best hiking trails near San Diego. All these sorts of things that people might be searching for when they're looking to take a trip, we want uh, and, and we would recommend that, that you blog on those so your website shows up when, when the travelers are searching for them. Um, you're going to see a big difference You're not, and you're going to see a lot of traffic to your site and you're going to establish yourself as the local expert. So yeah, maybe they're not ready to book right then when they're looking for best hiking trails in San Diego, but you put your brand in front of them and when they are ready to book uh, a property, a room, a hotel, whatever it might be in San Diego, um, chances are they're going to they're gonna go back to you because they've already, they've already become aware of your brand, they trust you because you've given them great content and uh, yeah, and, and you're going to see those people book with you uh, more often than not. The third thing on here, it would be to ev just evaluate your AdWords strategy if, if you have one to begin with. I know not everybody uses pay-per-click. If you do, um, you, need to, you need to evaluate it. Do some, do some basic searches to see where you're showing up, see how much traffic you're continuing to get from that budget that you've allocated to, to AdWords. But honestly, the, the most basic question, and this would be whether you're evaluating your AdWords strategy or any other aspect of your marketing, would be, are you still seeing an ROI from, Ad, from AdWords? And I would look at this in two different ways. One would be your overall budget. So I've spent X amount of dollars and I'm seeing a 200% return on my investment overall. Great, that's awesome. Then I would say, you know, 200 to 300, you know, or anything above that in terms of ROI, stick with it and, and continue to do it. But I would take that maybe one step further um, and say you need to look at each campaign within your AdWords or each set of keywords that you are that you are bidding on and see if all of your campaigns are actually providing an ROI. So you should have it set up where you can you can see those conversions uh, through analytics or through AdWords itself um, and, and you should see a dollar amount tied to every one of your campaigns. Um, and what I'm a dollar amount in terms of both what you've spent on that campaign and also the 
uh, the amount of revenue that you have that you have received as a result of that campaign. Um, look at your ad. What what we see a lot when we're helping people evaluate this is that a lot of times the overall AdWords strategy is doing great. Uh, you know, you're you're seeing that 200% ROI. That seems to make sense. Um, but when we when we look a little bit clo more closely and we see, okay, well, this one campaign you're running, you're you're seeing you know, a 550% return on your investment. But this other campaign you're running, you actually haven't gotten any bookings for, but you've spent, you know, $800 on it this month. That's where, why we say you need to look at it both big picture wise, total AdWords, but also uh, looking at it campaign by campaign. Um, I won't say any more on that. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to ask a question there in the chat panel and I'll get to it um, here in a few minutes. Um, the other thing we talked about traffic, we talked about ROI, um, and then if you if you aren't ranking above the fold or your ROI has diminished, uh, we think there's a couple things that that you can do then, right? So if you used to rank above the fold uh, and now you're not, um, you can definitely put more financial resources into those bids so that you can start ranking above the fold again um, and trying that. Definitely an option if you have that budget um, and if and if you see a high ROI from AdWords and if you know hey if I can just spend an extra 300 bucks a month um, but I'm still getting you know I'm still getting this you know two to three hundred percent ROI great it, it's probably worth that um, if you don't feel like AdWords is is any longer the the avenue in which you want to allocate extra budget um, we would look at reallocating that budget to other areas of the marketing, particularly uh, your search engine optimization. So, um, you know, bring somebody in who's an expert, or if you have somebody on your staff, you know, just maybe take something off of their plate so they can spend more time uh, doing um, that, the optimizing that needs done. Again, with the importance of the map listing and, and the top few spots, obviously that's always been important, but with them being even more important now with the results pushed down a spot, um, I would say, you know, allocate some of your resources, whether it's human resources or, or financial resources, into um, really solidifying your SEO strategy and seeing if you can get some of that organic traffic back uh, and that might replace some of the, that paid advertising traffic that you were getting before. All right, this is kind of where we're, we'll have a, a, we'll say a little fun. We had some fun talking about this, so I don't know if it's fun to everybody, but it was fun to us. Um, what will Google do with the vacant real estate? And I'm going to say, and I think I mentioned this at the top, we don't know. We, I have no idea exactly what Google's going to do. Uh, if we did, uh, you know, our <laughs> ourselves and our customers would always be showing up first and every single time anybody search for any search term. Uh, so we don't know what Google's going to do. Um, some of the speculation we came up with, one is we don't think it's going to stay empty forever. Um, yeah, we understand that there's definitely a streamlined look to it and maybe a more mobile friendly user experience when you take away the right side ads. But I don't think it's going to go uh, empty forever. It's too valuable real estate. Um, to just let it sit. Um, so what are some things they might, you know, we, we know that Google has the image search function. Maybe they're just going to start making it more image friendly so you don't have to click on another tab uh, or a button to get to the images. Uh, maybe they're just going to start showing up right away there at the beginning. Uh, the other thing is, is Google owns YouTube, right? Uh, why not put some of the YouTube videos on that right side that correlate to uh, the searches that people are doing? Um, so if you have you know, if you have any YouTube videos and somebody searches for Panama City vacation rentals, perhaps they're going to start showing some um, videos, some tourism type videos, some some vacation rental type videos off to the right side there. So speculation could happen, might not happen, but it's something that could make sense because since with Google owning YouTube, Google wants people to get to YouTube and, and use that search engine that they, that they obviously also own. Uh, the other thing that we think might happen too, you know, obviously until recently, there have been kind of the, the typical ads that are just very text heavy, um, getting people to click. Um, but what about video ads or interactive ads? Um, we could see this, you know, happening as well with the option, um, you know, a little like 10 or 15 uh, second videos that 
that might get people engaged like you see at the beginning of a lot of YouTube videos that I wait the five seconds before I can skip the ads um, but there's a lot of people uh, that are going to, to listen to the whole ad and, and again it's just building the brand awareness of whoever um, whoever has that ad so um, only time will tell, but it's fun to speculate in the meantime. Uh, again, we have no idea. If you have any ideas or things that you think, uh, again, put them in the chat panel. I'll, I'll be glad to share any of those ideas uh, with the rest of the audience as well, and we can all uh, speculate in this together. Again, if you've been with us before, you, you know that we like to give you a, a next step. We don't like to just give you information and then kind of have you figure out the rest on your own uh, this one's no different right um, your next step you know we're gonna offer a free SEO evaluation um, we feel that SEO the search engine optimization and your organic traffic needs to be probably uh, the the most important thing that you solidify as a result of this change um, you know we think that you know your organic traffic and the work that you do on a monthly basis can really set you up well for the long term. We, we, the work you do for organic traffic um, is going, should, if it's done well and done with a long-term approach in mind, pay dividends for you in terms of traffic and then bookings for a long time to come. Pay-per-click, uh, you're going to see, in a, you know, once you stop spending that money, that traffic goes away immediately. So again, we want to help you evaluate your search engine optimization, see how you're doing, uh, run a few reports to see, you know, how you're ranking for certain keywords uh, that are that are core to your business, and then go from there. So um, again, we're going to send out an email at the at the end of this after after we're finished here today, um, and talk and and give this as a, a free offer to you for for registering for uh, today's webinar. A member of our team, most likely myself or Matt, will analyze your current SEO strategy. Get, you know, put a report together for you, and then we'll schedule time to spend 30 minutes, um, and it doesn't even have to take that long, but about 30 minutes on the phone going through that report with you, giving you some suggestions on what you can improve, and even some ideas on how you can improve it. So, again, you can either email me, steven at q4launch.com, and just request that right away, uh, or you can wait for the email that we'll send out after today's webinar and, uh, and, and request that via our website once we get that email sent out. So, um, as promised, we also have time for some questions. I saw some pop in, in the chat panel as we were uh, going through today, so I'm going to pull that up here in just a second. Um, and if you have any more, please go ahead and, and um, submit those. We'll stick around as long as you have questions. So um, please feel free to, uh, to, to submit those questions, and we'll start answering here right away. A question here from Charles. I see you, you asked this question right at the top of our webinar, um, and I think I answered that throughout, but did Google remove the right-hand ads to dummy down the desktop display and make it look more like the mobile version? Um, you know, we covered that, uh, I think, a little bit at least, um, and I, I think it's definitely one of the reasons uh, that Google did it. Again, they they recognize um, the importance of, of mobile, and so they are trying to gear everything to be, you know, mobile-friendly first, um, but, um, you know, they still obviously need to make a great desktop experience too, since, you know, traffic nowadays is about 50-50 in terms of, you know, people searching on desktop and, and mobile uh, devices. So um, great question. I think we, we covered that, and you, you had a little bit of foreshadowing there. So, Charles, I, I appreciate that, que that question a, a good bit. Here's another question. Uh, for an inn or a bed and breakfast to counter to Google's move, uh, would you recommend we direct more paid um, pay-per-click pay to our own name versus select keywords? Why not increase pay-per-click from, say, 300 to 600 for conversion to beat the OTAs? Um, yeah, and that's something that we, we've seen recently, too, is that a lot of the OTAs, Expedia, TripAdvisor, they've started to bid on branded names of your businesses. Um, if that is an issue for you, 
we would say it was probably wise to go ahead and do some bidding on your own name. So Jerry, I, I think that that would be a good result or a good thing to do to bid on your own name. What we've seen is that you don't have to spend as much money as let's say a TripAdvisor does to win the bid for your own name because at the end of the day, when somebody searches for um, you know the Inn and Occidental, and since you are that entity, you shouldn't have to pay as much for your own name. So you you yes, it's an ad. You do pay a little bit, but it's a lot less than you know what TripAdvisor or somebody else might pay uh, when they're when they're bidding on your name. Um, the second part of that: why not increase pay per click from say 300 to 600 for conversion? Well. It's a good question. I don't know that raising the amount you spend um, would do anything to increase your conversion percentage once you get people to your website. Um, so the raising from 300 to 600, yes, should get you more traffic, uh, but you would need to look in analytics and, and look at that to see, okay, well, how well does my pay-per-click traffic uh, convert in the first place? Um, if it's you know if it's converting at one percent, well you're still pro still probably going to convert at one percent, but because you've doubled your budget, you should get double the traffic, which means you should get double you know the bookings um, from that as well. So um, again, we would probably err on the side of spending resources towards your, towards your search engine optimization strategy. Um, but if PPC is really paying off for you from an ROI standpoint, you know there's really no reason to up your budget if you if you feel like you can continue to cr maintain that high uh, ROI as a result of that. Here's a question: um, when you're when you're checking your organic results, are your results skewed? by your location and or past searching. Is there any way to get around that and see how you do in other areas or search histories? Uh, that's a great question and there is a way to do that. So um, one of the things that Google does is it wants to give each individual person the best results for them. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, if, you're, if you own uh, a B&B in Oregon, let's say, um, and, and you are always on your own website, um, when you go to search for the keywords that are relevant to your business, um, then yes, your business is, is probably going to show up there because Google knows that you already like that search result quite a bit. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's definitely something that's going to happen. It's definitely skewed by your, your location and search history. A couple ways to get around that. One, uh, I use Google Chrome as my preferred browser. If you use uh, an incognito search in Google Chrome, which if you just right click on the uh, the Chrome um, symbol, it'll it'll ask you for just a, a new window or a new incognito window. Uh, when you do that, it basically is searching then without any search history uh, involved. The other thing you can do in your search settings is you can then change location. So um, if you're a, a BNB in Oregon, you can you can search for, okay, when people are searching from Seattle uh, to take a weekend trip down to my area, you know, what are they seeing? What are what are folks in Seattle seeing? Um, so that, that would be a good thing to do as well. And then there's a lot of softwares out there too that can run some pretty good uh, keyword ranking reports for you. Um, that'll, that'll not take your uh, your search history into consideration at all. A lot of them are paid though, so if you have budget and you want to spend money on, you know, Moz or SEM Rush or anything like that, um, you can do it, and they provide pretty good results. Uh, but again, there's there's a cost to that as well. So, um, but without having to spend extra money, use Google's Google Chrome and use the incognito function uh, if you can. Next question here, what techniques can improve your organic ranking in the Google Maps section? That's a great question. So there's a lot of things uh, from a local standpoint that you can do, but really this, this isn't a whole lot different in our opinions than really your whole SEO strategy. So you need to build great content, uh, you need to have the most appropriate keywords of your business, and you need to really have content built around those core keywords. Um, and as you're doing that, you know, the map is essentially, um, you know, a, 
a ranking in, in the in the rest of the hierarchy, right? So you know, there's there's three map listings, and then there's the rest of the lift listing. So you know, say four through, I guess thirteen approximately in terms of the total organic results that show up. Um, so what you what you'd want to do there is just you know, make sure that your overall SEO is doing well um, for the core keywords that you need to be ranking for. And when that happens, you will get to the map listing. Um, but there, I wouldn't say, you know, other than making sure some of your 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 most local and core keywords are, are um, optimized throughout your entire website, that's going to be the best strategy just to continue to get up the rankings, whether it's from, you know, eight to five, from five to three, or from three up into the map listing. Uh, it's all kind of the same general big picture approach there. The photos, next question here, the photos that appear in the stack used to be submitted by the property and now seem to be assigned randomly from amateur sources. Any way to regain control? Um, honestly, Joan, that's that's a question I will have to do a little bit more research on. We've had some, uh, some customers and some other folks in the industry who have reached out to us and have said that uh, very similar things as um, you know, people Google or TripAdvisor or some of these other kind of search engines have been paying people to come and take photos of their area. Um, they're very unhappy with those photos because they feel like the photos aren't very representative uh, of their properties. Um, and as a result, they haven't been able to do a whole lot about it. It's kind of either you play by our rules or you don't play at all type of thing, unfortunately. Um, but I will, I will take a look at that. Um, I don't know uh, the details of, of the stack and, and that the why how the photos have been assigned of late, but let me get back to you, and I'll send you an email or something, uh, you know, after the fact as well. Uh, do listings in the big directories like bnb.com, TripAdvisor, uh, etc., add any SEO juice value to your individual sites anymore? Um, that's a great question, and the again, the overall answer to that would be yes. Um, one of the things that that we try to do uh, for our customers is is um, is get quality links. You know, earlier in the webinar, I mentioned that one of the the bad practices was trying to get spammy links from these kind of uh, link farm type websites that just well, you can pay them, you know, x amount of dollars, and they'll link uh, to your website. But it's just they're just really bad websites, right? Um, so part of what Google's looking at is, all right, one, how many how many links do you have to your website? Um, but two, what is the quality of the websites that what are yeah what is the quality of the websites that are linking to you? Um, so if it's just a bunch of bad websites that have no domain authority, um, then it's not going to help you a ton. But if you can get you know a BNB.com, a TripAdvisor, you know CNN, ESPN.com, Yahoo. What all these all these massive kind of entities that are getting you know probably millions of hits a day or at least millions of hits a month, um, then yes, and those are definitely going to help you. Um, and sometimes it's why you know you have to pay for those listings as well because there is you know there's a lot of value there. Um, but it doesn't have to be just those big kind of um, those big sites. There's a lot of great. Um, local sites that you can be a part of, and there's a lot of great just kind of content-rich sites that you can be a part of, um, and try to get your you know those websites to link back to you. So um, a lot of times it's merely reaching out to them and asking, hey, can we be a part of your site? What would it take? Uh, we'd love to feature you as well, um, and, and things like that. So uh, great question, but the answer is yeah. I do. There's definitely evidence that um, the big directory sites that have high domain authority. Um, are there is value to having a link on their sites back to your own website. Stick around here for a few more minutes. That for now seems to be the only questions that have come in. It's uh, quite a few questions, so I appreciate you all uh, submitting those. Um, stick around here again for a few more minutes and, and see if anybody has any others they'd like to ask or any of any speculation they'd like to throw out there for what Google might do with the right side um, of, of the search engine pages. Um, again, thanks for showing up. We are 
uh, we are going to uh, be emailing out a recording of this here in the next couple of days and then after we get off the webinar here today I'll send out uh, the opportunity for you to request a search engine optimization uh, evaluation where you're most likely either Matt or myself uh, will be uh, spending some time with you and putting a report together so that we can help you understand where you where you are right now, what you're ranking or where you're ranking and uh, what are some things that you can do about it. So um, got a question here about you know average fees for our services. Um, that's something we can definitely talk about uh, offline here and I can send you an email. Um, one of the things we, we try hard to do is just keep webinars is very educational and uh, and not you know not so much about um, our services and, and fees and things like that but definitely would love to have that conversation with you if, if that's uh, something you're interested in um, so again thanks for st thanks for stopping by today usually these are an hour long this one is 45 minutes so you can uh, you know, get on with the rest of your day here a little quicker than normal. Again, be on the lookout for both the SEO evaluation you can sign up for and then also the recording that will go out here in the next couple of days. Um, thanks again. We will probably not have a webinar next week due to our travel schedules, but look for another webinar uh, the following week, so that second week of April. Until then, if you have any questions, you can email me at uh, Stephen at q4launch.com. You can give me a call. My number is still there on the screen. And if not, we look forward to seeing you uh, for our next webinar. Thanks again for showing up and have a great rest of your day.